for those of you who have been around for a while, you've heard a little bit of this story before because I've always traditionally played rogues for the first character I've ever done through CRPGs. And Baldur's Gate 3 was the first game in the history of me being a gamer since I was like six years old, uh, changing that and playing a druid. And I am so happy I did because we just entered Act 3 this morning during the live stream and got to level 10 and I got the last of my wild shapes. I am playing a Circle of the Moon Druid and I tell you what, um, I honestly feel like after three years of early access and now, you know, a couple few weeks of the live game, the Druid is the best class in Baldur's Gate 3. And I realize that that is a highly subjective thing because it's my opinion and not everyone is going to share that opinion. But for me, I do think it is. And I'm going to talk about why that is in this video today. If you've heard me in any of my live streams, those of you who've been around for a while, I, I, I just constantly am like, oh my god, I love this class. It's so cool. There's so much awesome stuff. Nature's fury. Like, it's so much fun and having access to all of the shapes and being able to do those situational moments where you can run around the battlefield and like, oh, pull aggro with with the goad on your bear form or jump into owl bear form and just rupture and blast everything everybody back and do the triple attacks and all this other stuff. I was just actually on TikTok last night. There's the scene from the D&D film towards the end of the film where they're facing off with the sorceress and the, the tiefling wild shaped druid goes into owlbear form and like grabs the sorceress and like slams her into the ground a few times and then beats her up and then throws up against the wall. Like I really truly feel like that's how cool the druid class, especially the, the, you know, the wild shape component of the circle of, of moon um, druid. It, 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 it just works. It works. It really feels good. And it's been a lot of fun. And I'm so happy that I chose this as my first playthrough through the game. Now, I could talk about it all day, but I actually want to get into the game and show you guys some of the things I'm talking about and, and etc. We're not going to be doing any combat in this video just because this is my live stream character. So all you got to do to see combat in action is tune in daily at 11 a.m. Central. You can also go watch the backlog. There's a link down below which goes straight to the Baldur's Gate 3 playlist. So check that out. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And don't forget, we have a Discord. The links are also down there. So without further ado, Let's get into the game and talk a little bit more about why the Druid is the best class in Baldur's Gate 3. So first and foremost, Druids have a lot of spells at their disposal. And when I first, the first time I ever played a Druid was when I had Jahira in my party in Baldur's Gate 1. You know, she was multi-classed as a fighter Druid. And then in the second game in Baldur's Gate 2, I pretty much just stuck to her being a druid and I just ignored the fighter altogether and just leveled that druid up all the way through. But I never played a main druid until uh, I think it was my third or fourth playthrough of um, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. I decided to try a druid out and I was like, this is kind of fun. Um, and then it kind of grew on me. And then when I got into Pathfinder Kingmaker, I did a rogue my first playthrough, then I tried a ranger, and then the third playthrough um, that I was going through, um, I did a druid again. And it was like, eh, this feels a little bit better. And then I got into uh, the early access, and the bard was, or excuse me, the druid was actually the fourth or fifth class that I tried in early access and just fell in love with it. And if you guys watched the streams during early access, I actually played a forest gnome. And originally I thought I was going to play a forest gnome in live. Uh, and then eventually it was like, I can't play a short race. I got to play, I got to play a <laughs> wood elf. And so I have, I have Conan and, and, and here's my wood elf guys. If you haven't ever seen this character, look at that, look at that armor, by the way, just really, really, really cool looking stuff here. And that cape and his bow. Which is one of the reasons I went with the Wood Elf, because I can use uh, bows on, on top of everything else. Um, and I do, a little, I do a fair amount of, of ranged damage with this character. Um, it's great to have as a backup to cantrips, because some uh, mobs that you come up against have resisti resistances to spells. So it's nice to be able to pew pew from a distance, and also be able to use the specialty arrows that you get um, at your disposal. It's, it's a lot of fun. But spells are one of the first things. That you can look at and you do get quite a few spells uh, at your disposal um, i am circle of the moon obviously so spell casting is not my primary objective it's not my primary role within the group 
I am primarily a utility slash DPS character for my party. I have uh, Lazale set up as an Eldritch Knight tank. Actually, let's get out of the weeds so that you can see her a little bit better. Um, come on, Lazale. Get out of the weeds! <laughs> get out of the weeds, honey! <laughs> there we go. Um, so, uh, we've got there, and look at that. Look at Shadowheart, her new hairstyle. I gotta love it. Um, and, of course, Gale. Um, and this is my party so far. And this character has said he has largely been functioning as the utility DPS for the group. Um... And so as a result, I don't use a ton of heals. I do keep healing word on hand just to have a nice backup heal that I can cast at a distance. But apart from that, I am almost all uh, utility and DPS. So we can go in here and look at, say, if we just look at the um, first levels, you know, I've got healing word, Arabella's shadow entangle, faith wardens, vines, these are fun ones, thunder wave, Ice Knife and Speak with Animals, which I keep on myself at all times, because I am a druid, and you miss out on so many great conversations um, if you don't have that spell running at all times. Second level spells, I'm rocking Misty Step, um, uh, Spike Growth, Blur, which I don't use that often, Invisibility, which I do use occasionally, um, and of course Heat Metal, which surprisingly enough, uh, it works really well. Um, I used it on Kethric Thorm, the first edition of that fight on the tower, on the top of Moonrise, and was actually able to knock his weapon out of his hands, which was really cool, because then he was essentially couldn't do anything the rest of the fight, because he couldn't hit me with anything. It was great. Uh, third level spot, I've got Haste up here, as well as Call Lightning and Sleet Storm. Now, Sleet Storm is a lot of fun, um, because... And, and, you know, Gale can do it as well, but I like having this here because it's a situational thing where I can interrupt the spellcaster's uh, concentration and also put out fires and stuff and create the icy service, which knocks things prone. It's a lot of fun. Uh, getting into my fourth level stuff, this is where we start getting into the big booms. Ice Storm, which is just absolutely amazing. And I also have this with Gale. Um, stone Skin, which, by the way, Stone Skin is so cool, guys. Shunk! Look at that! Look at that! Stone Skin was probably one of my most, my most favorite spells in. Um, I remember Baldur's Gate 2 in particular with the mages because it would make you invul invulnerable to a lot of different uh, attacks, which was great for uh, spell casting stuff. Um, what else do we have in here? And then Confusion, which is befuddling a group of mobs. And then getting into my fifth level stuff. What's up, everybody? Quick commercial break here to give it a shout out to our guild champions, who are the highest tier memberships here on YouTube: Ancient Entity, Assassin Gamer 94, Bubblonia Rising, Crazy's Relative, Mujin, and Remedy. Thanks so much for the highest tier membership, and thanks to all of the members who support the channel because you keep me doing this full time. You too can become a supporter if you're new here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. Join as a member. There's three different tiers. We do lots of special stuff: private polls, private videos you get a shout out if you're the highest tier membership but you can also do one-off uh, donations in the form of super chats on any live stream or premiere you see and of course super thanks on any upload or youtube short whatever you can contribute it's great keeps me on the air full time keeps the cats fed keeps the homestead running anyway back to the video everybody this is where we start getting into really powerful spells. So we got Planar Binding, Insect Plague, which is a staple of Dungeons & Dragons. I absolutely love Insect Plague. Uh, and, um, wait, wasn't Confusion? Yeah, that was that one as well. Um, uh, Conjure Elemental, which is another great one to keep at my disposal. But um, cantrips aside and uh, spells aside, probably the most important part of the circle of the moon druid is going to be the wild shapes and i dinged 10 uh yesterday i think it was yesterday when i dinged 10 um and so i now have access to all of my shape shifting abilities apart from the displacer beast which you only get if you choose to chew on some tadpoles and i have chosen wisely i might add to not chew down on any tadpoles i'm, I'm not going that route <laughs> at all um but let's look at all of these shapes that i have at my disposal um we've got wild shape water myrmidon which is very interesting um we've got spider cat deep rothe panther saber tooth tiger air myrmidon fire myrmidon 
the Myrmidons came with level 10, by the way. Wild Shape Badger, Wolf, Bear, Raven, and Owl Bear. And then the Dilophosaurus, which I will probably never, ever, ever use. But hey, why don't we just cast it to see what it looks like? We'll watch everybody run. <laughs> don't waste a step. <laughs> I am a raptor. Hear me roar. Yeah! Um, if you haven't watched any of the streams uh, yet, the wild shapes make and break the druid in my mind. Um, it's one of the reasons I went with the uh, Circle of Moon version of the druid, because of the fact that I can come in and do lots of cool things with the shapes. So as an example, I showed a video the other day where I, where I met Steelheart the cat. And I went through this tiny little hole that was in the wall that I couldn't go through because of my size. But then I went down into cat form and I was able to go through that hole and come into this other area. And I've always used that in other areas to get past locked doors and stuff where you can find little cracks and stuff to sneak through. So it's incredibly useful in terms of situational stuff because you have all of these forms at your disposal that can do different things. Now, some of these I'm only using in combat and I have a, 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 a guide specifically dedicated to the wild shapes that I put out a few days ago if you want to check that out at your leisure. But the best part about this is that I have a totally separate hit point pool with the wild shape. Now if I need to, in a situational moment, I can be the tank. I can pull up bear form, do a goad, and taunt everything onto me. Or I can go into owl bear, which is the one I probably use the most when we're surrounded by a bunch of enemies because we can, I could do the rupture, which is a nice AoE. But my standard form that I choose to work with most of the time is the wolf form because of the fact that you get some... It's, it's great because you get to run around the battlefield looking like a wolf. And also, where is it here? Switch on. It just looks awfully cool, everybody. I mean, it's just really cool. But uh, this one in Siding Howl is okay because everybody gets some extra movement, but Exposing Bite is the one I love the most. And uh, you nip at a target, distract it. If your attack hits, the next attack can be a target from within 1.5 meters, can be a critical hit. Now, this is useful if other people are within melee range, but as you level up your forms, you get double attack and triple attack. So the moment you get double attack, you can use this yourself. You just literally, you're in wolf form. Hit it with a supposing bite, it lands, and then immediately your next hit is a crit hit, which allows you to do some really amazing damage from a you know melee flanking position. And now that I've got access to triple attack, it's just even cooler because now it's like I'll just do exposing bite, crit hit, and then a follow-up attack, and it's just like rawr, rawr, rawr. it's so much fun. And because these have their own hit points, um, you know, at this point, this this thing has a this thing has 69 hit points. So I can take 69 points of damage, get knocked back into my elf form, and then turn right back around and go back into wild form again during a combat scenario, assuming I have all of my wild shape charges at my disposal. Which means it's a very useful tool for getting around the battlefield and doing lots of different situational things depending on what's happening it's like oh are we surrounded by tons of mobs and i need to do a knockback and, and get everybody clear i'll go into owl bear and do a rupture oh uh, shadow heart or gale's getting wailed on by four or five mobs i'm going to go into bear form i'm going to go to get everything on me and then they can escape you know obviously they could misty step out if they needed to as well but they uh, can also if they're out of spells or whatever i can keep these wild shape uh, charges at my disposal to go in and out at will. Now, obviously, this is dependent on you actually having wild shape charges at your disposal. If you don't, you can't, but uh, you can't shape change. But that's okay because you get them back when you go do a long rest and etc. So, um, there's a lot going on with the druid. And I know some people like the spores because of the things they can do to control uh, other enemies. Other people like the circle of the land because you can do more spells. And I would argue that if you're going to go like spell casting as an option and you want to be like the gale of your party, then go circle of the land for sure because you get some really cool spells in that. You know, it's more, that's more towards the spell casting arena. But if you're like me and you like to do a little bit of spell casting with a little bit of melee, then I highly recommend 
this because I think it just works really well. And I've talked about this in the build guide that I did for this character. The reason that I went Wood Elf specifically is because of the proficiencies you get with bows. And I just think that that makes for a great situational attack being able to have something that you can pew pew from a distance and be able to use the arrows and everything else without having any sort of issues with the proficient of not having a proficiency with that weapon so in my mind this is the best class to play for your first playthrough i, I think that for me I'm really 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 happy that I did this it's been extremely potent and I know for example we did uh, I know the, the Moonrise Towers fight against Kethric Thorm, the very first time you face him, we did it the first time. No problems. Um, the second time we faced him along with the Avatar of Merkel, I actually won, actually rolled a crit on the conversation and got him to take care of himself, and I didn't even have to do that fight. Uh, but then I faced the Avatar, and uh, no problems, first time. Like, the group is extremely powerful, um, and I, I would argue that by the time we were level 6, Seven, eight. By the time we were level eight, I felt like this group had reached sort of its top peak, you know, potency. But obviously, you could you, we're going to twelve, so we're going to get even more powerful as we go along. But I felt by the time we got to level eight, we were really coming into our own, and I had access to most of my shapes. Um, I got the Myrmidons and the Dinosaur one at uh, level ten. And again, I think the only thing that I don't have is Illithid powers because I haven't done anything. I've got 14 of these things and I've chosen just to completely ignore these. I don't even know where the, uh, I don't, they're locked. It may, may be somewhere, oh, is this one? No, I don't even know where the Displacer Beast is in here, but I do know that you can get a Displacer Beast form if you choose to go juicy tadpoles, and which I will never, ever, ever do. Don't eat the tadpoles, kids. Bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs are bad, okay? So there you have it, everyone. That is it in terms of my favorite class for this game. Now, I will be coming back and eventually doing the Rogue, which because it's just, it is the thing that I've enjoyed the most in CRPGs over the years. I'm currently playing the Drow Sorcerer uh, about twice a week. It's a very slow playthrough. Once I finish up the live stream of the Druid, I will be streaming the rest of the Drow Sorcerer's adventures. And he's got a completely different party because uh, with this group, you know, I've got Lazale, Gale, and Shadowheart. Heart, and that group is Carlac, Will, and I will probably end up taking Jahira when I get to her, but until I get to her, I've also got Shadowheart in the party until I get Halson, then I'm going to grab Halson, and then once I've got Halson, I'm going to keep him until I get Jahira, and then we'll go from there. And then, of course, I have the Tiefling Bard that I'm playing with Bubblonia and Mujin and the multiplayers, which are every Tuesday at around 3 to 4 p.m. Central when we kick off those streams. So hopefully we'll see you for all of those characters as well. And once I wrap up the Sorcerer, I will then be going on to the Rogue, and after the Rogue, I will be working on the Ranger Beastmaster, and those are the ones that I tend to enjoy the most in my CRPGs. So, hopefully we'll see you in those videos as well. Don't forget to join the Discord. Links are down below. Support if you can with memberships, super chats, and get access to all the private videos and member chat stuff that we do. Until next time, everybody, stay safe, happy gaming, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below.